Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about humility while we take a look at the story of two guys on a road trip who had the greatest surprise of their lives. Ooh, spicy. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. You know what I've always thought I deserved? What? An invisibility cloak. What would you do with the invisibility cloak? I am so glad you asked. Wrapped in a secret sheath of invisibility, there's nothing I couldn't do, like acquire extra cookies. Or surprise my friends. Sherry, Sherry baby, Sherry, Sherry baby. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Okay, number one, I can see why you want to be invisible for karaoke. Oh, I, I don't want to make people jealous of my amazing vocal stylings, obviously. And number two, you will be happy to know that scientists are working on a real invisibility cloak. What? Yep, scientists have engineered a new class of materials called metamaterials that interact with lights in ways we've never seen before. A metamaterial cloaking device can hide an object by reflecting light around it. So, someone watching will simply see signals from images behind the object, as if it weren't there. A real life invisibility cloak? Mind blown. Um, Zeke? What are you doing? Ordering my invisibility cloak, of course. Um, I 
hate to tell you this, Zeke, but I N V I S I B I. Why are there so many eyes? So far, scientists have only been able to cloak something less than one inch tall. Oh, so I need a invisibility cloak and a shrink ray. Actually, I know a way we can make something disappear right here in this room. I've already been disappointed once today. No, really, it's super easy. Don't break my heart. This will work, honest. Well then, let's, let's make, make it. it. For this experiment, you need a large beaker, a small beaker, and some oil. Step one, fill a large glass beaker about three-fourths of the way with oil. Step two, take the small glass beaker and using tongs, push it all the way down into the oil. There you go. Whoa, it really worked. I can't see the small beaker at all. It's our very own cloaking device. Okay, science, how does this happen? When light travels through glass and then the oil, the speed of light slows down. On reflection, this makes the glass look invisible. The slowing down process of light and reflection through certain objects is known as the index of refraction. The beaker really is in there, right? Yeah. I love science. Well, we're about to look at something else that wasn't what it appeared to be. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. Luke is one of the four Gospels, the books that tell the story of Jesus' life. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God's very own son, Jesus, came to live among us. When Jesus grew up, he traveled from town to town teaching and healing. But the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. But early Sunday morning, Jesus returned to life. Lots of his friends saw him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. On the very first Easter Sunday, things were a little wild and crazy for Jesus' followers. First, the tomb was empty. Then, some reported seeing angels. And finally, some said they saw Jesus alive. For those who had not yet seen Jesus with their own eyes, <laughs> it seemed too good to believe. One of these followers was a man named Cleopas. Sunday afternoon, Cleopas and a friend were walking from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus, about seven miles away. Luke, who wrote down this story, didn't tell us the name of the friend, so let's give him a name. How about, uh, I don't know, Micah. As they walked, Cleopas and Micah talked about everything that had happened in the last week, trying to understand. While they were deep in conversation, a man came up and started walking along with them. Spoiler alert! The man was Jesus. But God kept Cleopas and Micah from recognizing him. Jesus asked them, What are you talking about as you walk along? The two men stopped in their tracks. <laughs> they just couldn't believe anybody could have missed all the action. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet. He, he, was, he was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. Yeah. Now it's three days since all this happened and some of the women who followed Jesus have told us something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Get this, early this morning, they went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us they saw angels who said Jesus was alive. After that, some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it was empty, just as the women had said. How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? As they walked together toward Emmaus, Jesus started explaining everything that the scriptures said about him. 
Now remember, these men did not have the New Testament. They had the laws that God had given to Moses and all the stories and prophecy written down in the Old Testament. Jesus went through it all, step by step, and explained God's plan. He told them how it was predicted all through scripture that the Messiah, Jesus, would come to save God's people and that he would have to die and return to life. Cleopas and Micah were completely floored by what Jesus said. When they reached Emmaus, it looked like Jesus was about to keep going, but they didn't want the conversation to end. Stay with us. It's evening, the, the day is almost over. So Jesus went into the place where they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. He picked up the bread. Thank you for giving us our daily bread. As Jesus broke the loaf of bread and handed it to Cleopas and Micah, their eyes were opened. Suddenly, they recognized who he was. Jesus, it's you. As soon as the men recognized Jesus, he disappeared. Remember how excited we were on the road as he explained what the scriptures meant? It could only have been Jesus. <sighs> the men were so excited that they left their dinner sitting on the table and ran all the way back to Jerusalem that evening, seven whole miles. They went immediately to the place where Jesus' closest friends were staying. We've seen Jesus. He walked with us on the road to Emmaus. The men told about everything that had happened. It was just one more amazing confirmation of the incredible truth. Yeah, that Jesus is alive. The end. Just imagine if you're one of those guys. I mean, you find out it's Jesus and then he just disappears. Like he can do that now. I wish I could have heard Jesus himself explaining God's whole plan. Yeah, that was a pretty awesome thing Jesus did for them. So what's our part in the story? Jesus cared about his friends so much that he wanted them to understand the big picture of what God was doing. And we can take the time to help others understand what God is up to as well. Like if you have a friend that feels like they don't fit in anywhere, remind them that God has made them unique and he has a special place for them to feel that no one else can. Or maybe your cousin is going through a really rough time. You can encourage them that God can use even really hard things to do something good. You can show humility by taking the time to help people understand other stuff too, like a, a, a hard math problem. Or how to tie their shoe. Or the best way to shoot a basketball. Yeah, just be patient, even if they don't get it the first time. Or the second time. Yeah, I mean, I sure don't understand things right away either. Yeah, that's right, me included. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Put others first by helping them understand. Could we get a giant glass vat of oil for me to turn invisible in? Ew! The oil and glass invisibility effect does not work on opaque objects such as humans. Well, rats. How about you just enjoy some karaoke music? Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the star <coughs> stars. <laughs>